Welcome to another OCD Recovery Instagram Live. I'm going to be talking all about fear of fear today, and I may or may not be joined by Nick. Uh, I just sent him a message to see if he wanted to uh, come on here now and talk to me about fear of fear because he was at the webinar the other day that we did on fear of fear. So it'd be good to have him here as well um, to talk uh, talk about that. So if he comes along, I'll add him into this live. Otherwise, I'll just carry on doing it myself today. Um, so what I wanted to talk about fear of fear is we are so scared usually of the sensation of fear. Now, that's understandable. Why? Well, because when we first developed OCD, we it didn't just start as some sort of nice thing. It was a nice pleasant, comfortable experience, as we know. It started with like chronic latched on anxiety, perhaps chronic guilt. And we remember those worst moments of our OCD journey very, very vividly. So because we remember that so well, we're so scared of that all coming back and latching on and getting stuck like that again. So we're very sort of hyper vigilant of getting in that cycle again. So we're watching out for that one eye on that at all times. So Recovery is about learning to be at peace with those sensations. I don't ever now in recovery think, oh my God, what if I get really bad again? Because I think, well, even if I did and I got chronic anxiety, it wouldn't be good, but I would still be able to eat, walk, sleep, uh, watch films, listen to music, do all these things. The world wouldn't end as much as it feels like that and as much as we catastrophize it in our head to be like that. And then also what happens is when we start to feel better, we get very, we remember what it feels like to be good. So it's like taking candy from a baby. You get scared of, oh my God, this feels so good. I really just want to cling on to this. I don't want to lose this. And bang, it comes in again there at that point because it knows that you really don't want to lose this thing. Uh, the same as maybe if you were coming from real poverty and you made some money and you just got a place of your own to live in, you'd think, oh my God, I really don't want to go back to how I was before. And that's the same with the OCD journey. So fear of fear is something that is at the core of so many OCD cycles, but often and usually overlooked. That fear of that really uncomfortable sensation coming back. Now, when I used to be struggling with OCD, you're talking a long time ago now, and that I was, how old was I when it, when it was really bad? Probably around 19 years old. So that's sort of 17 years ago. Uh, now at that period, there was very little resources that were good resources, good resources in sort of video content for OCD and anxiety. And there was loads of sites that had four or five videos on anxiety, and then you had to sign up to a program. So they were very rarely giving away a lot of content, especially on this in relation to anxiety, sensations, fear of fear, and so on. And so when I built our channel, one of the main things that I wanted to do was make sure that we had so many videos going out for free, because to change that, to change OCD, change anxiety worldwide, you need as much free content out there as possible. What used to happen back in the day is you used to get the all these ebooks that were how to break these fear of fear cycles. And I bought lots of these ebooks and they got me nowhere because they were predominantly things like try and stay distracted all the time. Well, you can't stay distracted all the time. That's not physically possible. And you used to say things like uh, play a guitar, or get in, play a musical instrument you like, listen to music you like, uh, work out lots. And so I was like doing this like as a regimented routine uh, over and over and over to make sure that I never felt the anxiety symptoms. So it was obviously setting up a cycle of being very scared of the sensation. So then when I realized that didn't work so much, what? It, it wasn't that it didn't work in entirety. Short-term uh, distraction is very helpful, but as a long-term solution, it doesn't work. Um, so Aaron Beck used to talk about distraction and the benefits of distraction. He used to often talk about that as a short-term solution for where someone is really, uh, Aaron Beck's one, the main founder of CBT, he used to talk about that in the sense that when someone's got so much anxiety symptoms going on, they're so scared and they feel like, oh, this is never going to end and, what, and all that kind of stuff. Having some distraction and realizing, hey, I didn't feel so bad when I was distracted makes them feel a lot better because they realize they've got control over uh, over things. It not We're not chasing control, but it makes them realize that actually they're not 
whole body is breaking down, that they're actually quite comfortable and actually anxiety sort of flows in and out. Because uh, we're not trying to eradicate anxiety. That's the other thing that people um, often think is that the goal is complete eradication of anxiety. That is not the case at all because we don't want complete eradication of anxiety, obviously, because anxiety is designed to save our life. Um, so yeah, so with fear of fear, it's very much, I mean, two books on the reading list that I put there for, for the main reason was Claire Weeks, Pioneer of Anxiety, absolutely incredible work on anxiety. That Self-Help for Your Nerves book, great sort of pillar book, starting book for learning about anxiety symptoms. Then you have Paul David, much, much later came along, repackaged that, made that sort of worded a lot better in relation to his own experience. Always liked his work, always thought it was very good. Sure for OCD, um, with the Ellis work and getting under the core fears and so on to stop the chronic guilt, uh, chronic anxiety cycle, which, which is not in all cases of, of chronic OCD, but in a lot. Certainly in my case and most people I work with, we need to get under the fears more so it reduces. However, because I spent a long time using just Claire Weeks and using Paul David and it not releasing fully and it was always there in the background and just thinking I'm a treatment resistant case. But it's actually because I was still scared. The same as if someone came in, they'd just been diagnosed with disease. Claire Weeks and Paul David's not going to do much because it's going to help you with the sensations to calm yourself, but you'll be terrified of what's to come, maybe if it's associated with your treatment for the disease or fear of death. So then it's turning up the heat with that. So what we need to do is learn to change those perceptions of those fears through uh, principles of stoicism, which later on formed into Albert Ellis's work and so on. So changing our perspectives of those core fears, seeing that fear is an illusion and breaking down that catastrophized thinking. But Claire Weeks and Paul David laid out the foundation, so much of the foundations for fear of fear. And it's so helpful, that stuff. And like I was saying back in my day, when I was trying to get better, all of this stuff was sort of packaged up with like two free videos and then sign up to a program. And then the program was all about distraction. But then there was programs, obviously, that covered lots of the principles of Claire Weeks that were very helpful too. And I ended up on some of that too. Um, so I think what you want to be thinking about when it comes to, when it comes to uh, fear of fear is what is the fear? The fear is the sensation being produced by the brain through the nervous system, okay? Now, when you've been anxious for a long time, that's fired up. So Claire Weeks said that you're not go going to expect anxiety to go overnight because it's taken you a long time to build up this sort of very chronically anxious state. Uh, even if it started quite quickly, it's still your thinking and everything that brought it together bit by bit. So you're not, acceptance isn't something that just happens and it's done. It's not a, it doesn't happen in that sort of black and white format that we want it to happen in. It's a sort of phasing, it's a fades out. And so that situation with acceptance is you're not, you've got to approach it as like if you were learning a language. You're, it's not going to take a lifetime, but it's going to take longer than you want for the body to adopt it. And Claire Weeks always used to draw on that. And uh, Paul David talks about that in, in a great way. It's often put, and actually I saw in a great forum post years ago uh, by a sort of veteran of the anxiety world in his sort of 50s, 60s, and spent a long time studying anxiety because he had bad anxiety himself. He used to put out lots of wisdom to all of us in the forum back then. Uh, he, said, um, he said that the skill that you're looking for is to be able to be to tolerate anxiety and be comfortable with it rather than getting rid of it. Now, he wasn't saying that that was lumping it, the phrase that I used to, to coin to describe sort of carrying it on your back and, 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 and it's sort of being there and resenting it, but just going along with your day. It's sort of that idea of you've just got to put up with it forever, which is often an idea that sadly sort of continued in the OCD community a lot, that we've just got to put up with OCD and recovery isn't chronic, um, the absence of chronic guilt and anxiety, but it's sort of just a whack and waning roller coaster your whole life, which is complete nonsense, not true at all. If, if we know that a fear is the only catalyst for the cycle. So, so what happened there is he was saying that you want to look at getting more comfortable with it. That's the goal. Getting more comfortable is how we're looking at it. What can I still do with it there? Can I still go to the cinema? Can I still go for dinner? Can I still see my friends and family? Can I still do all of these things 
with its presence. And that was what was so key in my journey towards recovery. Learning to see that I could stand it, that I could wear it like an uncomfortable coat, that it wasn't a nice experience, that it was an uncomfortable experience, it wasn't very pleasant, uh, but it didn't stop me like I imagined it would. And that was key because what happened is I had learned to view it, learned to see it as this terrifying, all-consuming force. And that is what kept me so scared of it. And another thing that you often see, uh, especially by people that don't understand OCD very well and think you can just leave thoughts there with OCD and just leave the anxiety symptoms and it will fix in all cases and scenarios. Well, no, that doesn't work. And that's why people then become more scared of fear of fear because they think, oh my God, all the anxiety hasn't gone and I'm not even that anxious. And so then they get scared. So we're looking at it as a journey so that you're learning to get under those core fears to bring the background chronic guilt and anxiety down. But having anxiety there is not the end of the world. It's not a disaster. It's okay for it to be there. It's the same as if you get angry or you've never experienced the feeling of anger before, you'd be like, oh my God, what's this? What's this experience or anything? If you haven't any experience, a bodily sensation you haven't experienced before, will be scary. Maybe somebody who has a disease which gives a particular neurological symptom, once they learn that that neurological symptom is harmless, then they're less scared of experiencing that sensation. But initially, when they uh, first develop the sensation, they become very scared of it. And there's many things like that in life. And I can think of many variations of nervous related symptoms that I experienced along the anxiety journey that gave me all of those experiences in the body and made it feel very, very scary. Because I was like, what's this? What's this sensation? What's this feeling? That must be dangerous. Why is my heart hurting? Why is there a pain in the chest? Why are all my muscles locked up? Why do I feel like my eyesight is a bit kind of going a bit blurry? Why do I feel my uh, skin is all very dry? And all these versions of these things that that when we don't realize how much the nervous system is causing this, triggered by anxiety, we get very scared of these things. So that's what these books, both Claire Week's book and the Paul David book, are very good at doing explaining so that we understand, ah, this is how the nervous system is reacting. But what we don't want to do is keep reading that in a reassurance cycle, uh, because what we do then is we're trying to, like, I was trying to always say, like, oh, that symptom's nothing to worry about because that's just an anxiety symptom. But then you get to a point, well, what if this isn't an anxiety symptom? So then I always have to take it further to accepting even if it wasn't, or even if I died, or even if I got very ill, or whatever, or any of those things, that internal surrender from all of these sensations that, uh, that, that arise because of this nervous system that's fired up. And that's going to happen with OCD because OCD and anxiety, you know, it's a fight or flight. You're trying to get out of somewhere. So you're going to find that uh, you're going to find that you you're going to find that your body is going to react all the ways like you wouldn't think if you got really angry right now, you'd feel all different sensations. You'd feel your muscles tight. You'd feel your heart pounding. You'd feel your breathing short. You'd feel all of these things. But because we know those and they're sort of, uh, it's very common in society, those sensations, we don't view those like that. But if you suddenly woke up in the middle of the night feeling very angry with all that going on, like a, you'd be very scared of that. You'd think, what the hell is going on? And like, this is a disaster. So it's about getting comfortable with whatever sensation is there, especially with panic attack recovery, which is where a lot of my OCD and anxiety and generalized anxiety disorder and all of that stuff journey started because when a panic attack sensation used to come on, I wanted to run away from that sensation so much to escape it, to get away. And so that was the problem. You've got to lean into a panic attack and allow it to do its worst, allow it to make you feel the worst you felt or whatever. And then as you become internally willing, willing is the key word, then it loses its grip. It's the internal resistance, the opposite of willing, that means that it builds up. And that's why we get that situation. So we're learning to become more willing. We're learning to become more allowing. We're learning to just allow the body to do anything. When we were younger, we would be in situations where we were like, 
you might have got ill or you might have bumped your arm and fallen off your bike or something and you didn't care you got on with it because you just accepted that as part of life but when we get older what we do is we get to a position where we think oh my god this is dangerous because this especially with OCD and anxiety oh this is dangerous oh this means this this means that and so on and you get all these different sensations going on that, uh, that then we get very very scared about experiencing and um, and those just build up and build up and build up and then we get that whole anxious cycle going on um, now what I want you to think about with your whole anxiety OCD journey everything that you're experiencing is that any sensation you're experiencing is what you're experiencing there is you're just experiencing a sensation caused by the brain brain causes sensation in the nervous system we experience a sensation that sensation if we left the body the brain the nervous system to play out and just do that we wouldn't have a problem but we then intervene and we say this shouldn't happen this is danger this we must stop this we must uh, and all of these things and it's us getting so focused like Claire Weeks often said, if we left the body and the brain to do these things, for these things just to occur, for these things just to happen, most anxiety and nervous problems would be solved. But it's our internal searching and fighting and resisting. And like the same with OCD, when people come to me and they're, they're trying to recover, they're like, what have I got to do? I've got to do this. I've got to do that. And I've got to get this done. I've got to follow that plan. And what if I don't? And what if I stay stuck? And what if I don't understand it? And it's that internal chase. It's like, treading water under the surface very, very, very fast. It's that going on, that's going on. But what's happening is we're learning to see that we can float, as Claire Weeks says it. So giving up that internal treading of water so fast under the surface to a floating. But how do I float? What do I do to float? How do I get into this float position? What book should I read? That's the chasing. We all do that naturally. We're all thinking, we're all thinking as soon as we notice some way to get better, we've got our eyes completely focused on that thing, thinking that is the direction that I've got to follow. And I've got to follow this point, that point, that point, that point to get better. And if I don't, I'm just going to be completely locked in the state I've been forever. And that's the problem. People, when they come in to see me, they want a blueprint of exactly how to eliminate anxiety forever so it never returns, they're never bothered by it again, and that's what everyone's focused on. That is the thing they're craving. I was craving that. I went from place to place to place to place doing that. So what you're doing is you're learning tools. You're learning how to recover, bit by bit, one day at a time. There is a blueprint, but it's not followed in the sense of tick this box, tick that box, tick that box, tick that box. That rigidity that we want to follow is why the chronic guilt and chronic anxiety cycle persists in the brain. That is at the core of it. And I always see that problem, all the time. And I remember when Kirsty first came to me, and she'll often talk about it if you've seen Kirsty's videos on our YouTube channel. She came to me, she came from a, a mental health hospital that was specialised in OCD, and she'd been there for a long time, and then I started working together, and she'd come in with this huge book of all the notes she'd been taking about every single thing to do with get, learning about OCD and every single point. And I said to Kirsty, I said, there's great points in there, but I said, the rigidity that you're following that note-taking and journaling is the problem. So I said, she said, what do I do with it? I said, just throw it over there for the moment. And she's like, no, no, I need it. I need to write down what you're saying because if I don't remember exactly what you're saying, then I'm going to make a mistake or I'm going to forget something and it will be the vital thing. I said, I used to go to all the sessions I ever went to in the past thinking, oh my God, what if I forget what they said? And then that's the thing that I needed to get better. It was like I was that OCD cycle. We're always searching for this like key to unlock an imaginary lock that doesn't even exist. And that's what we start doing then in sessions. We're like, oh, I can't miss one thing because that could be the key ingredient to me getting better. That's the most vital ingredient. So I said, Kirsty, leave that folder for now, you know, because that folder is the rigidity, is the control. And she said that was one of the main things initially that helped her give up so much of that internal control and resistance. And it's so key. You often see that in her videos. So there's loads of things like that. Or I hear people typing away at 100 miles an hour every single thing I'm saying in a session or writing down hundreds and hundreds of notes. And I always say, make some notes. Nothing wrong with making notes. But it's the amount of notes 
and why we're scared of missing the note. And you can hear that. So instead, what we want to be doing is making a note for a couple of points. So you go to a session, a couple of points, a couple of sentences, but not 500 sentences, everything. I used to go to sessions with sticky notes, writing every single thing down, sticking them all over my bedroom. Bear in mind, I was only about 17, 18 at the time. Sticking them all over my bedroom, everything I'd remembered. Oh my God, if I forgot that. Then asking at the end of the session, in the last five to 10 minutes, like a hundred questions, like, excuse me, can you please tell me, just can you just recap everything you said to me in case I missed something? When you said that, did you mean that? Did you not mean this? Because if you meant that, then this meant this. And that's what a lot of my job's like. It's like you're speaking to people that are speaking like that, because that's how I spoke. And it's like we're in this sort of internal locking mechanism, machine-like internal experience when we've got OCD and we're sort of like, did that do this and did that do that? And then what if that happened and this didn't? And then how do I know that this means this? And what if that doesn't? And then that book said this and that book said that. And then what if I don't understand this? And then I need to know this tonight to know that. And then I can't be at peace if I've forgotten that. That's what it's like. This sort of internal locking all going on in OCD. And that's what we're learning to do the opposite of with that floating that Claire Weeks talks about. But how do I float? What does that float mean? Let me get, where do I get this book? That, that's the control again that's happening. So we're trying to balance that out, trying to break that down, okay? So that is a sort of a brief discussion there on fear of fear. Um, there's been a lot of this video will be going up on YouTube. There'll be lots of videos I'm doing on fear of fear, loads and loads of free videos. We also do the webinars that will be on fear of fear as well if you want to come to those. Um, very specific on fear of fear, but we're also doing tons of these videos on the channel on it too. Um, and I will be going into the next video into detail all about the, um, ex the, the more about acceptance, unconditional self life, and other acceptance. Um, and we, I mean, we've done a few videos on the sensations and accepting the sensations and fear of fear over the last few weeks. Nick did one on fear of sensations, I did one. Uh, and then I just recently did a video, if you haven't seen it, I think it was the day before yesterday, on sort of motivation and what I took from the OCD journey. So the, the things that I took that empowered and changed my life, those are that's in the last video I did. And then Kirsty and Nick are doing a video on their journeys as well. And I think Momin talking all about how it empowered their life. Because I think that's really important because often you think, oh my God, if I hadn't had OCD, I wouldn't have been in this mess and like I've got nothing out of it. Whereas actually it gives you the building blocks that completely can transform your life. If you if you really look at what's in that, that uh, the, the, the sort of gifts from it, because there are from struggle we learn. And that's what I talk about in the last video, how I was first um, I first came across this when working with cancer, cancer patients that had very bad anxiety. And they said, naturally, obviously, you, you would, would have in a situation like that. And um, and I said to them, you know, different ones, I've met loads over the years. And I said, what, t tell me something about uh, your journey with cancer. And um, and one person said to me, I don't think I was, no, I wasn't, I wasn't coaching that person. That was somebody I met. And they, I said to me, tell me something about your journey. And they said to me, well, cancer was a gift to me. And I said, I was blown away by this. I thought, how could anyone say cancer is a gift to me? And I said, what do you mean by that? And they said, well, until I had cancer, I didn't see the world in the world way I do today. It completely woke me up to that. I was living this much more surface level life and I really appreciate my friends, family and all the connection I have. It completely changed everything. And like, obviously it was the worst thing that happened to me, but it also was like this gift that changed my life. That was their words. That's what they were saying to me. And I thought, that is unbelievable to think that. And then I looked it up online and loads of stories of people explaining it in the same way. And I could really see what they meant then. I could see how that was transforming their perception of the human experience. And you know, that's that if you if I didn't have OCD, well, I was very aware of things, aware of suffering, aware of connection. I didn't have that on that depth that I that I really experienced after that struggle that really takes you to the edge. And and we know that struggle because that's the OCD journey. You're all here because you're on that journey and we, we all, no one tends to be here because OCD has been easy. Uh, we, we know the, the, the sort of the real hardness, the pain of that, of that journey. And you know, that's, that's, that, that is what wakes us up and really gets us to see things. And then what is key is because of that, 
We then do this work to change our perspectives and learn to see things differently. And then as we do that, that plus the struggle and the, what we've been through, that combination is what gives us this new perception and changes our life. And like I said, it empowered my life. Um, guys, great to see you all on here. And I will see you on the next Instagram Live. Um, I was, I don't know why I started waving yet. I was, we had a few more points to say. Um, I'll be on the next Instagram Live doing an unconditional self-acceptance video, uh, acceptance in general, uh, talking about conditional self-acceptance, the conditions we put on our own self-acceptance, uh, accepting others, compassion for others, a couple of videos more on detailed on compassion and what that actually means. Um, and I will be going into more detail on fear of fear because, I mean, you could do a hundred videos on fear of fear. It's, it's such a... Uh, big part of OCD in general uh, and, a, and a section which I'll be covering in great detail in my book um, so yeah I will see you guys on the next Instagram live in the next day or two I'll see you guys then take it easy see you later